This time on Established on Campus, we went underwater. Well, not technically, but we did talk to Keen Clifford, who tells us how he gives fishing a tech twist. Hey guys, welcome back to our dorm room. We're here with the CEO and founder of Prey, Keen Clifford. Hi, Keen. Amanda, hey everyone out there. What's up? Tell us, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your company? At Prey Fishing Tackle, we make new kinds of fishing lures using 3D printing. Fishing lures, in case you don't know, are these little plastic, fish-looking plastic, almost like a toy, that has hooks on it. And when a fisherman or angler pulls them through the water, they move in ways that replicate food for predatory fish. So it's a way to catch bigger fish without having to use living bait. So let's consult our startup meter. What do you guys think? Was using 3D printing to create fishing lures a success? We think so. Serious question here, but you know, if I was underwater, I'm wearing these, what would the prey um, actually it. look like? It's funny that you used a snorkel because I actually use uh, a snorkel and mask sometimes when observing the new lures that I make. It helps me understand what's really going on under the water. The product that I'm selling right now uh, has three unique movements. The popper is kind of like the wounded gazelle on the Serengeti, right? And you're trying to catch the lion. Well, what the popper does is it floats on the surface. It's a wounded minnow and it makes a big splash. If you were on your snorkels, you'd be looking up at the surface and you would see this thing splashing and going by your face. Just like that. <laughs> All right, the walking bait, that's next. This bait, if you were looking up with your snorkel mask on, it'd be zigzagging over your head, just like that. The third style is called the jerk bait, and it's not called the jerk bait because it's a jerk. It's called the jerk bait because you jerk your rod, and that makes the lure act in a certain way. Basically, it keeps the fish on their toes, so that way you can help you can catch more of them. Okay. I shouldn't say toes. I shouldn't say fins, right? Oh, definitely <laughs> fins for sure. Um, and you know, we actually I remember we went out and we went fishing with you before, which it was, was awesome. so fun. <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We actually caught something. So can you talk about, you know, there are so many lures and lure companies out there. What makes yours different? Yeah, that's a that's a great a great point. I mean, when you said there's so many lure companies out there, there so I should first start by saying there are thousands of lure companies out there, especially in the global market. And I just focus on one niche of lures, which is called hard baits. So they're made out of this hard plastic. Um, and in that market alone. There's a hundred over 150 different companies in the United States. Very competitive space. The way that I differentiate myself is in three major ways. First, I look at innovation. I try to make new kinds of products that don't exist yet that anglers can find value in. And by, by find value in, I want it something to be uh, dynamic, useful across many situations, but also very easy for them to fish. The second way I differentiate myself is that I 3D print my products. Now, uh, what that allows me to do is allows me to easily customize size and shape, and that's another thing that anglers truly value because every day on the water, fish queue into different sizes of prey, and across a season, little fish that were born in the spring start to grow and get bigger, so you have to change the size of your lure. So I can customize my lure to fit an angler's needs exactly. And the third thing that's unique about my product is that it's the first biodegradable hard bait to be sold on, uh, on the public market. So uh, I use a material called PLA, that's a corn-based plastic that takes about 10 years to biodegrade. But, um, I know you got started at Syracuse, don't worry. Yeah, represent. Represent. Um, can you talk about, you know, what, it, what was it like to get started on campus? Syracuse University is a fantastic place to be an entrepreneur. I mean, it's rated one of the top entrepreneurial schools uh, in the country, and there's a reason for that, because we have programs like IDEA, uh, which helps students uh, take innovation to a commercial level, and then other neat opportunities like the, uh, the makerspace, where I've been using all sorts of cool equipment, including 3D printers. So being with bright minds is motivation to want to do your best and keep moving forward, and being in an institution where all students are working on different really exciting ideas makes me want to do my best. Uh, and that's something that is irreplaceable. Thank you so much, Keen, for stopping by our dorm room. Um, you know, we love going snorkeling. 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 It was so much fun. We'll see you guys next time. Um, and in the meantime, check out establishoncampus.com. Bye, guys. All right. Take care. <laughs> what did you think of Prey? Tweet us at EST on Campus. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more startup stories from young entrepreneurs. 
Hey guys, welcome back to the dorm room. Uh, today we're talking to C Clifford. No, oh my gosh. <laughs> King Clifford, it's all good, Amanda. Clifford. It's great to see okay. you too. <laughs> today we're talking to King Clifford. He's the CEO of 